Hatch India was organized at Vishakhapatnam, Andhra Pradesh, between the 29th and the 30th of September 2023. It was organized by the All India Shrimp Hatcheries Association, or AISHA. The goal of the event was to initiate a dialogue between the broodstock suppliers and the hatchery operators. Now, broodstock suppliers and hatchery operators are in touch in an individual level, but bringing them all together is what Hatch India did. All in all, about 500 people participated in the event, and most of the broodstock suppliers and the hatchery operators across India were present. There were presentations made across two days. The first day was about broodstock suppliers explaining their plans for India, and the second day was about nutrition and disease management in the hatcheries. The panel discussions after each session focused on issues that hatchery operators were facing and what they would like the broodstock suppliers to do to support hatchery operations in India. Fishing Chimes was invited and we were there with the camera crew. In this video, we wouldn't be focusing on the talks exclusively, but we will show you the industry's take on what is happening right now and how it should be solved. Our first question was, where does the buck stop? Does it stop with the hatcheries? And we posed this question to Mr. Ravi Kumar Yalanki, the president of Aisha. Here is what he had to say. In fact, the buck starts with the breeding, you know, that's upstream of uh, hatcheries. There it uh, gets started. That is the starting point of the whole value chain and breeding forms the foundation for the entire industry. Then comes to hatcheries, then the farms, and then again, uh, the markets, you know. So I think everywhere there should be changes. As hatchery operators, we thought uh, we would uh, talk to the breeders, what they can do to help the industry. I mean, we are not in a good shape. That's a known fact. Everybody knows it. You know, the size is shrinking. So the breeders have to change. They have to come up with the lines uh, that would suit the uh, Indian environment, uh, biotic as well as abiotic environment. It's fast changing. I mean, when I say biotic, it's about the diseases. When I'm saying abiotic, it's about the environment. The temperatures are uh, uh, going way too higher. If you look at the oceanic temperature this year, it is higher by two degrees. So in light of the increasing number of challenges, is the brood stock up to the challenge? This is the recurring theme across the event. This is where everyone was saying, don't give us your best brood stock. Give us the brood stock that is best for India. Hatch India, as Mr. Ravi Kumar Yalanki stated on the sidelines, was about starting a dialogue, not any dialogue, but one to find solutions for an industry in crisis and about figuring out efficiencies in the hatchery segment. Before we go further, let's step back and understand what the crisis is. This is what Mr. Muttukurappan had to say. Cost of production has increased very high. The feed cost is high, the lease cost is high, the power cost is high, the manpower cost is high. All these put together has put an effect on the overall cost of production, which is almost coming matching close to the sale price. So even if they make a margin, it's around hardly 10%, 15%. It was not the case for 10 years back and all. The margin used to be more than 100% or even 150%. Now it has come down to a level of 10, 15%, maximum limiting to 50 rupees per kilo or 100 rupees per kilo. In these conditions, when there is a disease outbreak, which is frequently happening, or a stunting of growth due to EHP and various new emerging diseases, what is happening is one crop is lost, the second crop cannot recover the loss of the first crop. So it takes two crops for any farmer to recover a loss, which was made in the previous crops. So this has created a turbulence in the minds of the farmers, whether to go forward or not, whether to go forward or not. This is the, con this is the farmer's mind right now. So if a farmer loses a crop, he has to get two successive hits to recover his losses incurred in one crop and then a little. But the industry is not immune to crisis. It has happened earlier too. But why is it different now? Let's see what Mr. Srinivasan says. It's, it's only during the crisis we all meet up. <laughs> so my, my feeling based on, I won't say uh, the experience in the past, say, 20, I mean, 35 years, what we are facing now is a real crisis. Uh, in the sense, like, even farmers from East and West Godavari, 
irrespective of the price fluctuation, they used to go on stocking, harvesting, and they were able to make money. But in the last three months, what we see is that uh, even East and West Godavari farmers are reluctant to stock, even though the prices are slightly better now. So only reason is it's a disease, and we are not sure whether it is uh, falls under any of the diseases known to us. So my feeling is, you know, every four to five years this happens. Like when we had EHP, which was endemic in our system. Even then, we were able to come out of it through better measures, better security measures. But in today's context, I feel there is something else or something more than that. So because of the continuous onslaught of diseases, the farmers who have been taking risks even during other crisis situations are backing out. But are diseases a new phenomenon? No. This has happened time and again and there have been discussions on this without any solution. Mr. Bala Subramanian, a farmer, explains. In every of my presentation, I've been saying this. If we don't fix the disease crisis, we are going to crash. And it's happened. We have crashed. Why is it crashed? Because of disease only. The disease has been there, but price was helping the farmer to somehow get, make some money. So he was farming. But the disease fixing never happened. Figuring out what is going to fix this. If we did not do enough disease control management, we were going to crash. I told long back, it just took a little longer because our farmers are that much more resilient. Prices were also good. Somehow we managed it. Now prices drop, everything crashed. Grinding halt. How do we come back? It's going to be a big, big, big task. So that's the current situation. Low farm gate prices for shrimp and then recurrent disease issues. The farmers are faced with a double whammy. The farmers' hands are basically tied. On one hand, are the falling prices and the, on the other are the crop losses. The hatchery operators like Mr. Ravi Kumar believed, believe that breeding companies can do more to reduce losses due to diseases. This is his take. I mean, if you look at our uh, farming today, I mean, there are more uh, issues with the diseases. We have onslaught of diseases, you know. I mean, we have uh, WSSV, it's not giving any respite. Then you have EHP, you have white feces. So we need to have robust lines, the lines that can resist uh, the diseases. Uh, we need to have tolerance. I mean, so far we don't have uh, white spot tolerant stocks in SPF, you know. So they need to incorporate the tolerance. Uh, I mean, that's what I think. I mean, they're saying, you know, already some tolerance is there and all that. But, you know, whenever uh, crops are hit with white spot, you know, it is wiping out crops, you know. It's not that 20% of them are dying or 40% of them are dying or 50% of them are dying. You know, it's a complete wipeout. Maybe the white spot strain, what we have in uh, India is more virulent. I'm not sure. Not only hatchery operators, but farmers too believe that broodstock should be India specific. So I don't see the wisdom of uh, companies repeatedly trying to introduce high fast growth, super fast growth, extra super fast growth. All that should, they should just pull it away. He might, they might say, you know, there are some farmers who need it. I mean, there is one uh, Sachin Dalgar who was a Ferrari and there is somebody else who today morning also saw, uh, saw a beautiful uh, uh, BMW Z4 going around. That's just one here and there. I mean, there is somebody small can. But to a large extent, all the farmers are in this so-called uh, contaminated situation. So you introduce breeding uh, programs or you introduce growth stock, which is robust enough to withstand the situation. So to offset the situation, brood stocks should be tailor-made for the Indian conditions. But not all brood stock suppliers are providing that. Throughout the event, Mr. Ravi Kumar Yalanki was hitting on this point repeatedly. And the solution, Sentinel Trials. Right now, no uh, breeding company is localized. That's why what I was recommending them is to do the Sentinel Trials. Means uh, they send their Sentinels, several families of theirs, and test in Indian waters. Whichever family is doing good, uh, they'll figure out and uh, that information, they'll take it back to their breeding program and they try to breed that particular line for India. I mean, uh, then it works. Our efficiencies are going to go up. I mean, uh, in, in one line, what I would say is selection in India and breeding in 
the origin, wherever it is, Florida, Hawaii or Mexico, you know. But the selection should happen here. The selection should not happen in their controlled environment of a breeding program in the nucleus breeding center. In the context of hatcheries and breeding companies, the statement is straightforward. Broodstock developers should focus on bringing their lines to India, test them out in local conditions, and then pick out the families that work and only send those broodstock over to India in the future. So in short, again, send us the broodstock that is best for Indian conditions. Sentinel trials would improve efficiencies to a good extent, according to Mr. Ravi Kumar. Later in the discussion, he said that something like this can be done within six months to a year. Seems like a no-brainer. So I guess the ball is in the court of the broodstock suppliers. Now, as we had Mr. Kutur Muttukurappan earlier state, the crisis is also because of the issue of price realization. A strategy that is often discussed is a focus on domestic marketing. So since there were all these experts here, we couldn't resist asking this question. We asked Mr. Srinivasan, Mr. Bala, Mr. Robin Pearl and Dr. Vijayanand on what can be done in the domestic marketing front. Let's see what they have to say about this, starting with Mr. Srinivasan. Already we are into somewhere close to 150,000 tons of uh, produce which is getting into the domestic market, which is, uh, I would say, it is, there is no data for that, but we all know where the markets are. So that is one way of uh, looking at it to come through this present crisis. So for that we need a supply chain and a cold chain, uh, really which is workable. Instead of opening up kiosks, shops, trying to make recipes out of uh, shrimps, my suggestion is to take the material, bulk quantities, into the wet markets, where the marketing is already being done. So, for example, if you go to a, any Chennai market, big market, you will find this discolored shrimps more in the market, which sells at a high price also. People don't mind uh, paying a higher price, but they look for the quality. So again, you know, there's no point in taking frozen shrimp to a wet market. So it has to be chilled shrimp. So that's, that's where the coal chain and the supply chain plays a major role. Domestic market is a challenge, no doubt about that. It doesn't offer the guarantees that export market offers for exporters or packers. With the export market, they know what they would sell the whole year and they can plan accordingly. The domestic market doesn't offer such benefits and it is a serious task to set up the supply chain and the cold storages. If the cold chain and the supply chain were set up, as Mr. Srinivasan said, packers or a group of farmers would be able to plug into any existing system and send their shrimp because all of this because the opportunities in terms of domestic demand are huge. Here we call upon Mr. Balasubramanian again who is a farmer and many years ago ventured into domestic supply. Why did not it happen in the past? None of this was available at the past. People didn't have not have the money. Chicken was still the most consumed meat at that point of time. And it was not that many people were spending money eating out. Now the money amount of money people spending spend on eating out or buying things from outside like Swiggy, Zomato. All, almost every third meal I'm told in big cities are ordered out. I mean ordered in from, from any of the stores. So this could be the next possible thing where you give them a convenient product and, and if you see, if you, if you have chick, ever cooked uh, prawns in your house, that's probably the easiest thing to put it together. If you, you can just uh, buy a packet of prawns, if it's cut clean and ready to cook, you put it on your pan and just add a few masala within five minutes, it's ready to eat. So that kind of convenience only this product can offer. Based on all these things, I feel this is, a, this is an excellent chance for us to take it forward. Now what needs to be done, that's what we are constantly debating, how are we going to do it? Mr. Robin Pearl in his presentation at Hatch India 2023 said that the crisis is an opportunity and the industry now has a chance to change things for the better. So we asked Mr. Robin Pearl for his view on domestic marketing. If I were to get in, uh, become a farmer today and I have a choice to go, okay, I can grow pigs or I can grow um, meat, uh, uh, cows, or I can grow chickens, or I can grow uh, shrimp. I'll grow shrimp. Obviously, it is such a such amazing protein. So I think it's just we need to target young people. 
um, I think you know introducing it into into their into their social networks and making this something that you just eat. I think that it will it will start growing it will start growing very rapidly. India has a young population, and so again, it's uh, and it's shrimp. I'm not trying to sell you red seaweed. You know, it's shrimp. It's actually pretty good. Dr. Vijay Anand of USEX Soy Excellence Center is good at dissecting ideas into small workable action plans. So we pose this question of domestic marketing of shrimp to him. So let's say uh, you have a marketing plan of uh, about uh, three lakh tons of shrimp to be sold pan India. How do we go about it? That's something that you put the figures on top and then divide it by four. Uh, east, west, north, south of India. So let's uh, let's take two lakh tons. So it is fifty thousand tons. Uh, west India and fifty thousand tons. East India and fifty thousand tons. North India and South India. Now that is just like a blanket division. But you might want to say that North India can consume more. So then you increase the percentage there. So develop. What I mean to say is develop a marketing plan and question back yourself: Is marketing fifty thousand tons difficult for us? In West India, yes or no? I don't think it's a big issue. So India can be zoned into four regions: the north, the south, the east, and the west. And domestic marketing targets can be assigned for each zone in a year. Nice. Can we delve further into this, Dr. Vijay? Okay, let's go back to the two hundred thousand tons example. I said divide it into four. Uh, if you want, divide it. Take the country. I mean. Take the country and slash it off into four. If you want more sections, then slash it again into an X. Then you get eight quadrants. Now see what places are falling in those eight quadrants. There are certain major cities that fall into the eight quadrants. There are line two cities, tier two cities that fall into those quadrants. So list them out separately: the major cities and the line two cities, and assign all these volumes. If you divide two hundred thousand tons by Five major cities and ten tier two cities. You are talking about fifteen uh, places. So two hundred thousand tons divided by fifteen. Your number even comes down for the volume of material. So once you have the volume of material, take one city, a major city. Take one tier two city, and draw a plan. Question yourself: How do I sell twenty thousand tons into a major city? In a year, I'm talking about twenty thousand tons in a year should not be very difficult. And if you want to know how this twenty thousand tons gets further divide, distributed, divide it by twelve, and you get a monthly volume, which is less than thousand kg. Now question back yourself. Can't then you may think that thousand kg is so reachable per month. Then increase it to thousand two hundred kg. Extrapolate it back or extrapolate it down. Either way, you switch. I think you'll get a wonderful marketing plan. It's very simple. No rocket science at all. No rocket science indeed. But the big question is, who would take this up? Now we did have that discussion too, but this video has become very big, and YouTube viewers don't like that apparently. So that is a discussion for another time. In case you would like to see these interviews in full, do let us know in the comments below. So let's sum it up. There is a crisis, and there needs to be a solution. Or a group of solutions. The question is: Is the solution going to show results in the long term or in the short term? Again, in the context of Hatch India, Sentinel trials could offer benefits in, let's say, a year. In the long term, species like Indicus could offer hope. But what is needed is a continuous dialogue, as emphasized by Hatch India. Researchers, government, and industry shouldn't work in isolated pockets, but should communicate with each other. And have a transparent feedback mechanism. Only when you have a continuous dialogue, actionable out outcomes are possible. Hatch India started the dialogue, and Aqua India, I'm told, is going to take it from there into the farming and the processing segments. The situation needs to be resolved at many levels, and if not, there are going to be further problems. I leave you with this quote from Mr. Ravi Kumar Yelank. I mean, if you don't change, we are going to take a nose dive. There is no doubt whatsoever. The shrimp prices are not all that uh, great. I mean, uh, they're uh, at all-time low. 
And if we are not able to be efficient, we are going to lose out on the game.